Holy Jesus. What is that? What the f*** is that? This week on How to Spend Your Money, Fish Edition. How to Build a Tank Rack. Spoiler, it's Fish Edition every week. Today, I'm going to show you how to build a tank rack for under $100. It could even be less than $60 if you already have some supplies. Oh, that's a lot. That's way too much. You, no, that's way you f***ed up. No more? This rack can hold a total of 12 10 gallon aquariums and one 40 breeder for more than 160 gallons total. Starting from the bottom, the first shelf sits one and a half inches off the ground. All shelves at three and a half inches thick. The 40 breeder that I'm gonna place on the first shelf is 17 inches tall. This will give us an eight and a half inch gap above the tank to work, followed by another shelf then a row of 10 gallon aquariums at 12 inches tall with a seven inch gap to work above followed by another shelf at three and a half inches then a shelf of potentially five gallon aquariums at 10 inches which would give us seven inches of space above another shelf at three and a half inches and then a final row of 10 gallon aquariums at 12 inches with seven inches above and an inch and a half thick frame of two by twos to top it off the total height from floor to ceiling will be 97 and a half inches. We're going to need 12 two by fours. I bought a couple extra in case I messed up. One sheet of plywood, four feet by eight feet, or get it cut to size at the store because a full sheet will not fit in your car. You could also go without the plywood if you want full rows of tanks on each shelf and don't mind not having a top. Three inch outdoor construction screws, like 120, maybe. If you have extra, too bad. Eight 3 8 inch lag screws, at least four and a half inches long, a saw that can cut two by fours at 90 degree angles, a circular saw, table saw, or you can have an employee at the hardware store cut the plywood for you. A drill would be nice for drilling pilot holes for the screws and lag bolts, some clamps or two extra hands, an adjustable wrench or socket, and lastly, if you want, paint, stain, or polyurethane. We're gonna start by selecting the straightest four two by fours to be used for the uprights. These do not need cut. Then pick the next straightest ones for each horizontal shelf support. These and the shorter supports from front to back are the only sizes of two by fours that we need. So the curvier the wood, those can be left for the shorter boards. Next, we need to cut 18 17 inch 2x4s. I have two, almost a full one extra. Wow. And finally, for the top edge of the rack, we need a 2x2 two two border with the front and back 45 or 46 if you want an inch larger, and 20 inches from front to back on each side. After we've got our boards cut, we can sand them to make sure everything is a little more polished. It'll also be easier to paint and to clean once we finish since the surface will be less rough. trying to pick which boards I want showing the most. Some have some nasty knots, rough spots, so I'm gonna try to put those in the back or on the underside. The hardest part about making each shelf is making sure each board is sitting flush against each other. The more precise you can be with this, the more likely each tank will sit flush and not rock back and forth. I'm using this corner clamp, which I'll link in the description, but it's really not necessary. It just makes it a little easier if your floor surface isn't flat. Otherwise, laying everything on the ground to square it up is also an option. I'm putting two of the three inch screws into each end face. First, pre-drilling a pilot hole so the wood doesn't split and then countersinking each screw hole. Although, if you aren't worried about aesthetics, skip the countersinking part. 
The next part is probably the hardest part of the whole process, so if you had an extra set of hands, that would be super helpful. Basically what I'm doing is getting each upright screwed to the edge of each shelf, and putting a scrap 2x4 under each corner of the shelf to raise it up 1.5 inches. Then once I've got one screw in each upright to temporarily hold it in place, I'm going to attach the top shelf. Measuring down from the top of each upright 19 inches, 7 inches for space above the tank plus 12 inches for the tank makes a total of 19 inches. Then I'll align this mark to the top edge of the shelf, then drive in two screws side by side in the space I have between the two screws we screwed in from the front. We're basically doing the same for each shelf. Nineteen inches for the top edge of the top shelf, thirty-nine point five inches for the second shelf, sixty-two inches for the third, and we already have the bottom one in. These are all the measurements from the top. You can start from the bottom, but they would of course be different. This is also assuming that the shelf second from the top is set for 10 inch tanks with a seven inch gap above. If you wanted to switch these shelves around for the smaller shelf to be on top or the smaller shelf to be on bottom, you can do that as well, but it will change these numbers. Then, I'm going to assemble the 2x2 frame for the top. I'm pre-drilling and screwing each 2x2 together. Try to offset the screws so when you drive in a screw into the top corner of the frame to attach to the shelf, the screws won't intersect. Or you can use brackets to attach it. After that, we can take each of our 17-inch supports and screw them in where we've marked our tank edges to sit. Two screws front side and back. Pre-drilling, countersinking, and then add the screws. Again, be careful to make sure everything is flush so the tanks sit flat. Use clamps if you need in order to make sure the boards don't move when you drive the screws in. Now we're going to drill a pilot hole between the two screws holding the shelves together and through each upright. This is essentially going to be all of the structural support holding up each shelf, all the weight of each shelf. For the 3 8 inch lag bolt, the pilot hole should be roughly 5 16 of an inch and ideally as long as the screw. I also used a washer on the bolt so it sits nice and tight but doesn't bore into the soft wood. All these bolts and washers are zinc, 
You can go with stainless steel if you want it to outlive you, or if you'll be spraying this thing with salt water on a daily basis. Other than that, zinc is about a third the cost or less compared to stainless steel. If you want to paint it, go ahead. I chose gloss black, but you can obviously choose whatever you want. I would use an oil-based paint like Rust-Oleum, and I thinned mine down with mineral spirits so it would soak into the wood better. I would also use at least two coats. You can obviously leave it as is, just wood. I chose something I knew wouldn't leave any residual residue that could possibly get into the tanks and hurt the livestock. Now I'm adding some dense foam strips with adhesive backing. This step could be skipped, but I do feel it adds a level of security to keep the tanks from moving, getting bumped off the shelves, and also helps make sure each tank is sitting flat without any pressure points. For lighting, I bought these budget LED floodlights. At about half the cost of one budget aquarium strip light, I can light two shelves with four of these lights. I'll order another two lights when I'm ready to set up the top shelf of tanks. I'm screwing in two lights per shelf onto the center supports and positioning each light between the middle of the two tanks on each side so that all four tanks are illuminated. Then it's time to cut the plywood. For my setup, it's 42 inches by 20 inches for the shelf and 45 inches by 20 inches for the top. If you added an inch to give yourself more room for the tanks, it would be maybe 43 by 20 for the shelf and 46 by 20 for the top.
Now we can finally add the tanks. <laughs> so close. Oh my gosh. I got this 12 outlet power strip with individual switches so I can control everything independently. And I secured the lighting cables and airline with these little adhesive clips. I broke the first one I used trying to fit the larger light cord inside, but I was able to open it wide enough if I heated the hinge side of the clip and then gently opened it. 100% on these 50 watt floodlights gets pretty hot, so I'll be running them about 50% which is plenty bright. These lights happen to be dimmable, so I hooked up a dimmer box I made a long time ago, and I'm able to dim the lights as needed. If I wanted to go brighter, I think I'd want to add some foil-backed insulation to the bottom of the tanks right above the lights so the water didn't get too hot. So that's it guys, the construction of my first fish breeding rack. Many more videos to come, including getting this fully set up to breed, propagating plants in these tanks as well, setting up a budget nano shrimp tank, that's coming soon. Subscribe so you don't miss out, and leave a like if you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time.